Hey Savvy Devs, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be going through how to install Linux Mint. We'll first download it, then I'll explain how to flash it onto a disk, we'll boot that disk, and finally run through how to install it on an empty storage space of your choice. If you're new and stopping by to watch the install today, please take a moment to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more videos. I'm here on the linuxmint.com website, I'll go ahead and make sure to put a link in the description below. We're going to go to the download section, and the first thing that we're going to see here is the download for Linux Mint 19.3 Trisha, and we'll go ahead and scroll down just a little bit. They always show off their latest and greatest release, and this is actually a very recent release just given to us a couple days ago of Linux Mint 19.3, and it comes with a new notifier to let you know if there are potential problems with the system and suggests how to fix them. So we have three different desktop versions here of Linux Mint. We have the Cinnamon Desktop, Mate Desktop, and the XFCE Desktop. Each of them have a 32 or 64-bit version. Depending on what type of processor you have, you'll select a 32-bit or 64-bit. Most people are going to be on the 64-bit architecture by now, but they do offer the 32-bit for older processors and older hardware. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and select the very first desktop environment, so that's Cinnamon and I'll do the 64-bit version. And that'll take us to a new page where it just tells you a few things about this Cinnamon 64-bit edition. And you can see here how big it is, 1.9 gigabytes. And it has release notes as well as an announcement. If we go down, we can see all the lists of mirrors that we have. So I'm just going to select the Harvard School of Engineering. That's close enough to me. I'm gonna hit the Allow button, and the download has begun at this point. And now that I've downloaded the ISO, I'm going to go ahead and launch the Belenna Etcher app in order to flash the image onto a USB or CD of my choice. Belenna Etcher is an easy to use application and is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below if you want to download the application. You can also use any other application that can create a bootable disk such as UNet Bootin or Rufus. Let's first start out by selecting an image, and that image is going to be the one that we just got done downloading. So we have Linux Mint here, 19.3, the Cinnamon desktop environment version with 64-bit architecture. Go ahead and select that, hit open. And next we're going to select a target, but I don't currently have my USB stick inside the computer, so give me a moment. And the USB automatically populated one once it was inserted into the computer. Although if you have multiple USB sticks, DVDs or CDs, you can go ahead and select a drive that you wish to flash the image to. Just make sure that the USB, CD or DVD that you have is completely empty and that you don't mind overwriting whatever's currently on it. Once you're ready, go ahead and hit continue and then finally hit the flash button to begin flashing. After you flash the disk, you'll take it over to the computer or server where you want to install Linux Mint on, and then insert it. Then you'll have to boot into your BIOS in order to change the settings around and select the newly created bootable disk to boot first. This is usually done by finding the correct key to boot into BIOS for your particular computer. It's usually one of the F keys, such as F2 or F10. Then you'll find a tab usually called boot order and then exchange that order around so that the bootable disk is the first to boot. After you have that set up, you'll save and exit out of your BIOS, and you should see a screen similar to this if you did everything correctly. If you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button. It really does help me out. All right, if you see this screen, you've successfully made it to the install portion. So we have a few options here. And the option that we want is to go ahead and start Linux Mint. Linux Mint boots into a live image of the operating system first before you can go ahead and install it. So that's what's happening right now. So give it a few moments here to boot up. And once you're on the desktop, on the left hand side of the screen, you'll see a little CD that says install Linux Mint. Let's go ahead and double click that to go ahead and launch the installer for Linux Mint. And the first thing we're going to be welcomed by is what language do we want to run the installer with? So English is fine for me. I'm gonna go ahead and select my language and hit continue. Next, we're asked for a keyboard layout. The English in the US is fine for me. So you can also test your 
keyboard here just to make sure that everything's typing in correctly. So QWERTY, that's right. And you also have the option of detecting your keyboard layout and, follow, and following through with a few steps in order for the system to automatically detect the proper keyboard layout. Once you have your keyboard layout selected, go ahead and hit continue. Next, you can choose to install third-party software for various things such as uh, Wi-Fi and uh, graphics. So if you have a graphics card that doesn't necessarily play well with some distributions, you can go ahead and just uh, install the third-party software just to be on the safe side. Otherwise, this isn't really necessary. I'm not going to select it. Mine will be fine, so I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. Next, we choose our installation type. So since my disk is blank, I have this option here to erase the entire disk and install Linux Mint. It says right here, warning, that this will delete all your programs, documents, photos, music, and any other files that exist on that current disk, including operating systems. So make sure that you're installing Linux Mint on a fresh hard drive or solid state drive where you have no data on or one that you're willing to overwrite everything on. You do also have the option of encrypting the Linux Mint distribution if you want to. You'll just be asked for a security key and then you'll have to type it in every time that you boot in so you can select that option if you want more security. And then if you want, you can choose the LVM partition option. This helps with being able to resize your partition later in the game. If at some point you do end up having more space that you want to use up on your hard drive or solid state drive, or you potentially add another one and you want to be able to put multiple ones together, this is a great option and gives you a lot of flexibility. As you can see here, it says it allows you to take snapshots and again, the easier partition resizing. This is also great for virtual machines as well. So I'm fine not choosing any of these options. You can also choose something else if you want to go ahead and go through some more advanced methods. So erase disk and install Linux Mint is fine for me. I'm gonna go ahead and hit install now. Now you're gonna get a second warning telling you that the changes will be written to the disk and that everything will be erased at this point. So go ahead and hit continue once you're sure. Next, you're gonna pick a time zone. Today I'll be in Madrid. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue. Following that, you're asked for a username as well as a computer name. So mine's just gonna be Savvy Nick. And then my computer's name, Savvy Nick, is fine for me. The username, Savvy Nick, is fine. And then go ahead and put in a password. And you have a few options down here where you can log in automatically every time that the system is booted. I like that, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. Just be aware that any time a person reboots the computer, they will be able to log in without a password. So it's a little less secure, but I'm not really worried about that for this distribution. And the last option down here is to encrypt your home folder for the user that you're creating. I don't need that either, but just know that it's there. So once you have all your information in, go ahead and hit continue again. And Linux Mint will begin installing the base system and all its packages. So Linux Mint is an Ubuntu-based distribution with a nice user-centric platform and comes with all the necessary drivers, tools, and applications for an everyday user. They heavily focus on making the platform an all-encompassing one. That way you can jump on in without having to start searching for drivers or basic packages that an everyday user might need. Instead, it's all neatly packaged and ready to go. For the most part, this distribution is one that many choose to migrate to as their first Linux platform where the stability and end user is in focus. And once the install is complete, you'll get this message here and you get two options in order to continue testing what you currently have here in your live image if you've been messing around or to go ahead and restart now. And while rebooting, you'll want to make sure to go ahead and remove any installation media that you may have so you don't boot back into the live image of the system. Otherwise, you'll just be forced to reboot once again in order to get to your newly installed system. So let's go ahead and hit restart now. And you get this nice message here. Not all distributions give you this, but at this point, it's safe to go ahead and remove that bootable disk that we created, which they call it an installation medium. And then go ahead and once you've done that, press enter. Give it a few moments while the system reboots. 
And here you go. If you've gotten this welcome screen, you've officially installed Linux Mint successfully. Congratulations on that. We're just going to go ahead and look at a few things here before we close out on this video. We have a welcome screen here, and it just gives you a few tidbits here on the left of things that you can look through as a newcomer. So you're welcomed and some of the first steps you can take in order to make your experience better. Some documentation if you have questions and if you need help from their forums or the uh, chat room that they have supplied, you can go ahead and do that as well. This is the new notification for any detected or potentially detected problems with the system. So here it says that I might want to check my video drivers in order to make sure that I have the proper ones installed. This is a really great feature that they've added in and has become available with many different Ubuntu distributions. We're gonna go ahead and exit out of that, ignore that for now. And then I'm just gonna show you here that you have the start menu here on the very far left corner, the file browser. If you click on here, it'll launch your file manager. You can look through all the files of the system through there. A quick terminal launcher, as well as Mozilla Firefox as their default web browser, which you can use. On the right hand side, we have the time, the current power and battery remaining, the volume, the current connected wired or wireless connection, the new notification tool that uh, has just been released with 19.3, as well as any updates that might be coming. And then of course on the desktop you have your file browser as well as the main computer options here, much like you would find in Windows with my PC. I hope you enjoyed this installation tutorial of Linux Mint. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to go ahead and post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.